Hi. So in my 30 years of life, I have been on exactly three dates. The first was with a guy whose opening line was, so can you have sex? <laughs> the second was an absolute charmer who told me that he didn't care that I was in the wheelchair, but my being a size 12 bothered him. <laughs> the third guy, well, he just had three pet pythons and he wouldn't blink for the entire hour we were together. <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty awkward. Um, so, growing up, I never saw myself as different. For all I knew, I was never anything but an ordinary kid. But as I entered womanhood, I became more aware of my disability, or more accurately, society's reaction to it. High school, it was particularly hard for me. When I was 15, I <laughs> it occurred to me that while I would grow out of puberty, I would never grow out of my disability. As a woman living with cerebral palsy, my existence, in particular my experience as a woman, has been influenced and dictated by society's views about my own body. Imagine every single individual you pass in the street having a preconceived idea about who you are, how you live, what you can and can't do, who you're allowed to desire, if you're supposed to or even able to have sex. But the thing is, disability is the only minority group that anyone can become a part of at any given time. So why is it so hard to see people with a disability as people, as human and as complex and human as anyone else. The way women with physical disabilities are portrayed in the media has moulded and shaped the public's view of them and embedded this idea of their supposed inability to conform to established gender expectations. For instance, can a woman in a wheelchair be a real woman in a relationship if she can't care for another person? Or maybe she won't be able to have children. Representation on screen, positive or negative, has an overwhelming influence on society's perception of how people with disabilities live their lives. But it's not telling the full story. Women with physical disabilities, like me, want to be taken seriously as sexual beings, yet decades of inaccurate portrayals have made it nearly impossible for me to be viewed as such. Scholar Barbara Waxman Fiducia was a disability advocate whose research investigated the sex lives of women with disabilities. After conducting a variety of studies, she concluded that the idea of wanting to experience intimacy with someone who's disabled, particularly a woman, is considered to be perverse and depraved among the majority of society. This is because sex and disability remain a taboo subject. More so, there is an assumption that being sexually attracted to a disabled individual is similar to pedophilia and incest. This is an incredibly powerful and dangerous idea as it, as it further alienates the sexual nature of women with a disability and the men who desire them. At the moment in our society, most who encounter a an intimate relationship between an able-bodied man and a disabled woman will view it in one of two ways. The man is either a saint for being with a disabled woman or he is labelled a pervert. And that's my speech. <laughs>
Um, no. Um, <laughs> it is my belief that physically disabled women should be treated, viewed and treated as equals among able-bodied women, that we experience the same... that we experience the same wants and needs as everyone else. <laughs> Society decrees that I shouldn't think about sex or be viewed as a sexual being. It views the vast majority of people living with a disability as asexual. Now, I'm not saying asexuality is a bad thing, but I personally don't identify as asexual. And and people like myself don't appreciate society assigning our own sexuality for us. Come on. <laughs> I often refer to my wheelchair as my own person, my own personal chastity belt. Mainly due to the fact that I really cannot stand the phrase cock blocker. <laughs> but, but, it feels, but it feels like the only legitimate way to describe society's part in my reinforced sexual alienation. I identify as heterosexual. I think about sex a lot. <laughs> uh, I like men, but... There's a reason men don't like me. They've been told that they're not allowed to think about me in that way. Now, I cannot tell you how many fan fiction stories I've read or erotic novels that I own. Um, I even once bought a fireman's calendar during the 2019 bushfires <laughs> and told myself it was for a good cause. No, no, all for the shirtless man. <laughs> I just like the dogs on the cover. <laughs> Mainstream portrayals of disabled women are driven by how their disability affects the character's desirability. Even when women with physical disabilities do appear on screen, they tend to embody conditions which are considered less distracting, like characters who are deaf, dumb or mute, disabilities that don't adversely affect their physical attractiveness to another. She is rarely written as an intellectually, sexually confident, vivacious young woman. This again confirms society the unconscious gender bias when it comes to women with physical disabilities. She's rarely written as having her own needs and desires. She's rarely written as sexual. I'll be done in a minute, don't worry. <laughs> um, so I decided that if I wanted to see change, I would have to do something about it myself. I thought the best way to do that was to combat stereotypes of asexuality and disability from the writer's room. I am one of the creators and co-writers of Late Comets, a six-part... <laughs> a six-part TV comedy drama about what happens when two... Two strangers living with cerebral palsy decide to explore their relationship with sex after watching their friends hook up at a bar one night. <laughs> uh, and chaos ensues. Um, <laughs> my personal goal with like, latecomers was to explore um, sex and disability in an authentic and realistic way. I wanted to create a narrative in which a female disabled character questions her worth as both a young woman 
and potential romantic partner in a budding interable relationship. The main character, Sarah, is written to be a parody of myself. About 80% of the character is based on my own thoughts, opinions and experiences, or lack thereof, as well as the relevant academic research I've undertaken. Uh, who needs cards? <laughs> I do, because that's not... <laughs> the decision to write Sarah as someone who is intelligent, um, quick-witted, has a versatile sense of humour and broad knowledge of sex, stemmed from my own desire to, to combat stereotypes of women with physical disabilities being passive and infantilised. The difference between Sarah and myself is that while she receives the opportunity to explore her sexuality and what she wants in a relationship, I'm still waiting. Imagine if we saw every single media outlet elevate representation of disability and sexuality in a positive way. Late comes this proof that authentic representation can be achieved, that change is possible, that we can sexualize the disabled body in a safe and open way. Thank you. <laughs>